Hi, church family. Really good to be with you. Hey, I wanted to take a few minutes and do a follow-up on the message that I preached this past Sunday. Uh, we had some uh, audio issues on Sunday, and it didn't come out the way we had hoped. And so what I want to do today is, is to bring the shorter version of the message, because there's some really exciting news about some things that we're going to be doing here over the next three months or so. I wanted to start with talking about the state of the church, not just uh, uh, the church here in uh, in El Segundo, our church in the South Bay, but also I want to talk about what's going on across our country right now and what's happening in the midst of the season that we're in. Obviously, there are many things as we look around uh, that uh, are very alarming, and I think they point to a lot of things, and I think it's an opportunity that we have as a church. And so what I'm sharing today is really more of a positive um, encouragement to all of you who call Bridge South Bay their home that we are going to enter into a new season. We're going to begin to prepare ourselves now, looking forward to 2024 and what God's going to be doing in this new year and some transitions, some changes for us as well that I believe are a positive thing. The first thing I want to do is I want to, I want to talk about some things that we know about what's going on in, in church world. There was a study done recently, a significant study, um, and it had been his study that's been going on for a few years now that has tracked what's been happening here in America in the Christian church. And I want to read some of these things just to help you see some things that are happening that I think are speaking to us as the local church and what we should be doing. If you see here on the screen, it says that about 40 million adults in America today used to go to church but no longer do, which accounts for around 16% of our adult population. For the first time in eight decades, that Gallup has tracked American religious membership. More adults in the United States do not attend church than attend church. This is not a gradual shift. It's a jolting one. More people have left the church in the last 25 years than all the new people who became Christians through the First Great Awakening, the Second Great Awakening, and Billy Graham Crusades combined. Adding to the alarm is the fact that this phenomenon has rapidly increased since the mid-1990s. Average church attendance in America in summer 2023 is 60 congregants. By 2070, if this trend continues, Christian affiliation could drop below 50% of the American population. And so what's that saying today? That regular church attendance has gone from three to four times a month to once or twice a month, and that number is really leaning more towards once a month. I believe that God is wanting us to adapt to what's happening in America today and certainly happening right here in the South Bay in our own culture. So what does that look like? It means that we're going to be putting more focus on what's going to be happening during the week as opposed to what just happens on Sunday mornings. These are not new initiatives. These are not new things. But we're going to be transitioning into a new season where we're going to make what's happening during the week, our discipleship programs, more focused, more integrated to meet the needs of our own community. And so making disciples who are making disciples is really going to become a big mantra for us. Why is that? Well, there's some scripture that kind of reveals some truths about what's happening around us that even 2,000 years ago was able to, to reveal to us what we're dealing with today. Look at what Paul says here in 2 Timothy chapter 3, picking up at verse 1. He writes this, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. Notice what Paul says here. He says, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. Many 
church leaders today, many national and international leaders today would say that we're definitely in the last days, meaning that Jesus is getting closer and closer to coming back for his church, that the rapture would take place. And I believe that the church has a great opportunity in the season that we're in. We don't know when Jesus is coming back. It, it could be today, and it could be 10 years from now, 20 years from now. But it's a time for the church, an opportunity for the church to rise up in a season where we are being incredibly focused on disciples making disciples, that we want to help grow our church in disciple making for others, that we would become disciples as so many of you are, but also that we're making disciples. So how do we come alongside people that are in the world today that are struggling with the things like being lovers of themselves and lovers of pleasure and lovers of money that Paul talks about? Well, the scripture tells us here in chapter 4 of 2 Timothy, picking up at verse 2, it says, preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, correct, rebuke, encourage with great patience and careful instruction, for the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itchy ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you, keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist. Let me say that again. Do the work of an evangelist and discharge all the duties of your ministry. Paul is exhorting you and I to be a part of the greater things that God wants us to do, that we're to do the work of an evangelist, reaching out to those that don't know the Lord, but also discharging the ministry gifts that God has given each one of us. And we're going to see that in just a moment. But beginning in the new year, we're going to be launching new small group ministries, and they're going to be broken down this way, three specific groups. The first one is this. We're going to begin discipleship classes that will help you grow in your faith and develop your spiritual maturity. Paul talks about this in 1 Corinthians 3.1. He says, Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. Here's what Paul's saying, is that the church has an opportunity to grow up spiritually, to get off the milk as a baby would be on milk, and to get into the meat and potatoes. And I don't know about you, I'm a meat and potatoes guy. I like a big, thick steak. And I want that spiritually too. I want to be able to grow so much in my relationship with God that I've been discipled so well that I'm able to share that with others now and help make disciples. That's what Paul's talking about here. He goes on to say this in Ephesians 4 and 11. He says, so Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, and the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. There's that word mature again, that God is speaking to you and I about growing up and being mature in our faith. Why is that? Well, he wants us to be prepared to be able to give a reason for the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. And in the season that we're in, maybe a season that we've never experienced in any of our lifetimes, and what's going on around the world, what's specifically happening right now in Israel, there are people that are searching for answers. And we need to be a part of the solution, church, to where we can give them a reason for the hope that they can have in Jesus Christ. Secondly, we're going to have home groups. We're going to lean this. We already have home groups. But we're going to want to grow our home group ministry to make a greater impact in the communities that we live in. In Acts 5.42, in the beginning of the church, it says this, that day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stop teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. We will facilitate leadership here for home group leaders that will be comfortable and confident to lead a home group. In other words, we're going to invite you to come to an information meeting and we're going to ask you to prayerfully consider about leading a home group within your home. And if you don't feel comfortable leading it, we're going to train and teach our leaders, but maybe you partner with another couple or another person who may lead the home group, but you would facilitate it at your house. Thirdly, we're going to develop community groups. These are groups that are going to go out into the community and meet for different reasons. Meet in a coffee shop, meet playing tennis or paddle ball, meet in a brewery, maybe surfing, whatever it may be. But the, the reason is to get together with others out in the community and to draw people together and to be able to have conversations about Jesus. 
See, I think that there is so much more that Jesus wants to do. There's so much more, church, that God wants to do in each one of you, in me and in you, and through our church into our community. And you see, all of us have a place in the body of Christ. We all have a role to play. So three things that jumped out at me when I was putting together this message and thinking about the change and transition. The first of this is that all of us need to have a heart to serve. In Romans 12, 4, for just as each of us is one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each one of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. And if it's giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. And if it's to show mercy, do it cheerfully. All of us, God has given us a heart to serve. And, and Jesus said, I came into this world not to be served, but to serve. And so we're going to be re- leaning into our home groups, doing training. You're going to hear more about this in the next couple, three weeks. And we'd love to have you be a part of this as well, preparing for the new year. Matthew, in, uh, Matthew 6, 33, it says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be given to you as well. This leads us to the second point, is that we would have a grace to sacrifice sacrifice means giving to the Lord whatever he requires of our time, our earthly possessions, and our energies to further his work. Sacrifice is difficult. It's hard unless you have grace. And so my prayer is that if you struggle with sacrificing for the greater things of God, giving up your time, your talent, and your treasure, that this would be a prayer point that you would go to and ask the Lord, Lord, give me more grace so that I would have a desire to sacrifice for others. And thirdly here, a people to love. See, it's more than just loving people, but it's also taking that love for people and putting it in to action. In Romans 12, 9, love must be sincere, hate what is evil, cling to what is good, be devoted to one another in love, honor one another above yourselves, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer, Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and not, do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but willing to associate with people of low position. And do not be conceited. Do not repay evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Now, I know that's a lot, but I wanted to keep keep that in there because it really speaks to what it means to have love in action and be loving other people in a way that brings glory to God and transforms lives because God is using your life to transform others. So before any of this happens, we need to be in prayer. We've just launched on our website an opportunity for all of us in our church to take one day a month that we would pray and fast for our church and our church community. You can go to Bridge South Bay, click on the tab about prayer, and you can sign up for that even today as you hear this podcast. But I want you to be in prayer. I want you to be thinking about what God is speaking to you and how you can be involved and serve in this new season. And then in the new year, we're going to launch the new year in the second week of January. We're going to go into a time of 21 days of prayer and fasting. And then lastly, probably the biggest announcement that is going to be happening for us Uh, We are beginning a renovation process here at what we call our ministry center with the focus that in February of next year, we will be transitioning out of Da Vinci High School and uh, coming back to our ministry center that we will now be calling our church when the renovation is done. I'm excited about this because I think this is going to get an opportunity for us to refocus, re-engage, retrain, and now step back into our community even stronger than before in the season that we're in. There's a lot of reasons why we are looking at transitioning out of division, or Da Vinci, I should say, that we are, is just all the things that we have to deal with at a public school and, and, and the obstacles that we face. But I want you to know that I believe in counseling with others and hearing from others and talking to our our, our 
our council here at the church and our staff that this is the right time for us to do this. We're excited about it. And so we're going to be refurbishing the ministry center. And I'm hopefully you're going to be seeing some pictures of what that may look like and what we're going to be doing. But it's so exciting, and we're looking forward to what God is going to be doing with that. Would you please be in prayer? And would you please be asking God, Lord, what is my part in this new season of Bridge South Bay and what you can uh, engage with and do in making a difference in others? I love you guys so much. I'm so thankful. Let me pray over you as we come to a conclusion. Lord, thank you for all that you're doing here at Bridge South Bay. We look forward to the next season. Lord, thank you for providing a way for us. Thank you for preparing all that is ahead of us. And Lord, please give us that desire, that heart, that love that you have given all of us, Lord God, that we would have that same kind of love for others. We love you so much, Jesus. We pray this in your name. Amen. God bless, church.